Thank God for these dads. Happy Father's Day to every, each and every one of you. And um, God is good. Aren't we thankful for our Heavenly Father? Amen. Amen. Kids are going back for Kids Church. How are you guys doing today? Good? Okay. God is good. I'm so glad you're here. Come to the house of God today. God's presence and His Word. Um, it's interesting preaching on uh, Father's Day or Mother's Day or something like that. You think about, okay, but uh, Father's Day is an easy one because we, Brandon and I talked about this, our Heavenly Father. We have, what a, what a beautiful job the worship team did, right? We have a good, good Father. I hope you had a good dad, but even if you didn't or if your dad wasn't around, I'm sorry about that, but our Heavenly Father can reparent us. Right? The Bible says if your mother and father forsake you, God will be your father. He'll be your mother. He'll be your husband. He'll be your spouse, whatever that is. He can fill in the blanks. Amen? He is so good. Well, I want you to look with me at a couple of scriptures this morning, and we're going to pray as we get ready to look in the Word. But if you have your Bible, turn over to John 16, 7, and then we're going to look over in the book of Acts chapter 1, too, as we get started here this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence here today. Thank you for each father as we prayed over them today so, so beautifully. We worship you. We thank you for your presence in this house, for each and every life. Lord, touch each one of us today by the power of your love, your grace, your joy, your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We thank you for each dad. We thank you for your grace resting on each family and home represented. We open our hearts to you. Holy Spirit, speak to us through your word. Make it come alive to us. Draw us closer to Jesus. Give us a deeper and a greater hunger and thirst to know you today, Lord, as we look into your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. John 16, 7, if you read that with me, and uh, I don't have it in Amplified, but I'm, it's up there in the, in the uh, New King James. I'm going to read it in the Amplified here. Jesus speaking says, however, I'm telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable, good, expedient, and advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, who's the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener, the standby, will not come to you in close fellowship with you. But if I go away... I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. That's a, quite a promise that Jesus is making. And if you look with me in the book of Acts 1, verse number 4, and it will, I'll just for the sake of time, we'll just look at verse number 1 and 8 today. But Jesus says, On this occasion, while he was eating with them, this is after his resurrection, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised you want to underline that if you have your bible open wait for the gift my father has promised and skip down to verse number eight you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses you'll be my witnesses so i wanted to talk today about um well let me just say i'm sure none of you look around the world, and sense any anxiety. I mean, I'm joking, right? I hate to bring it up this morning, but I mean, just if you had to put gas in your car. Or anything else, for that matter. And um, there's a lot going on in the world. The Bible says that this world system is corrupt. And all that's in it is perishing. I didn't say everybody in the system, but the world's system is corrupt and all that's in it is perishing. And there's just on an economic financial point, there's plenty of things to be anxious about. There are, as Jesus said, wars and rumors of wars. There are all kinds of things just in your own, bring it down the microscope to your own personal life. There's all kinds of things in our own families, in our own relationships, in our own neighborhoods. Come on, help me somebody to be anxious about and what i want to address today we're going to talk to dads but we're going to talk to everybody but the pressures of 
prices and pain, do you ever feel like it's just too much? Anybody? The pressures of just prices and pain. I'm talking about personal pain, relationship pain, financial pain, whatever, you name it. Disappointment, setbacks, all these kinds of things. And you don't have to tell everybody, but just give me a nod or something. Do you ever get tired of the struggle? Come on. I'm not trying to be a downer today, but let's just be real. Life can be a struggle. There's all kinds of really good blessings in life, but life can be and often is a struggle. And we're in a season right now where it's harder than it has been at other times. Are you with me? We can comfort ourselves by the fact that it was probably way harder for our ancestors. There's people in the world who have it a lot harder than we do. Come on. Yet, that doesn't change the fact that there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of pain and there's a lot of challenges and sometimes you just get weary. Are you with me? You get kind of tired of it. You get weary. And I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about the transforming power of Jesus, Holy Spirit. He says it this way, the Word tells us that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. The word comforter goes way beyond just sympathy and distress. Can I give you a little quote? William Barclay, who's a Bible scholar, describes the Holy Spirit's work this way. The function of the Holy Spirit is to fill a man or woman with the spirit of power and courage, which would take them triumphantly, which, which would make them triumphantly cope with life. Hello? Doesn't sound all that religious. That seems real, right? The narrowing of the word comforter has resulted in under-narrowing the work of the Holy Spirit. The function of the Holy Spirit is to fill a person with a spirit of power and courage which would make them triumphantly cope with life. Cope with life. That's Jesus' example. That's Jesus' message. We just read it. In John 16 and 7, where he told them about the promise of the Father. It's good for you that I'm going away. That seems, uh, we don't want you to go away, Jesus. We like you. We like having you around. No, it's good for you. It's better for you if I go. That makes no sense. Because if I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, my, fa- my Holy Spirit, who will be not only with you, but he will be in you. And he will bring you the power. So, you know, just a, just a short reading of the Gospels, we know that um, whether we're reading about the disciples or whether you're living your own life, the Bible tells us that storms will come. Hello? Trouble. My grandmother used to say, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. That's a scripture, by the way. And storms in life come, pressures in life come, pain in life comes, disappointment, setbacks, come on. That's real. And I know, I know most of the people on Facebook seem like they don't have those things. That's not real. Are you with me? Storms come to overwhelm our ability to endure. Could I just say something? I mean, I don't like storms. I don't like trials. I don't like difficulties. I don't like trouble any more than you do. But they're going to happen. Are you with me? Even when you make your best effort to avoid them, they sometimes happen, right? What happens when these storms are, let's just call them storms today, because uh, Jesus was sailing across the Sea of Galilee with his disciples in a boat. And the Bible says a storm arose, but Jesus was asleep down stairs in the cabin remember that we had the privilege and blessing to go to israel a few years ago i got to go once sherry and i sherry's been twice and uh we got to we got to go out on a little boat on the sea of galilee that was just absolutely blew my mind this is the real deal right here but they were out there at night and a great storm arose and it's a 
It's a pretty big body of water, so I could see, if you've ever been out in the middle of Lake Tahoe, you know, if you get in really rough water, it's kind of scary. And uh, a storm arose. It was at night, and they went and woke Jesus up and said, Master, don't you care that we're going to perish? Sometimes storms come up. You feel like, I think this might be the one that takes me down. Are you with me? I don't know if I can endure this one. I don't know if I can get through this. The storms have the ability, just like it did for those disciples, to, to um, bring us to the end of our ability to cope and expose our weakness. Are you with me? We kind of live our life, most of us, to try to cover up our weaknesses, right? Lean toward your strengths. Hello, come on. And sometimes we don't even know the weaknesses until they get exposed through a storm or a difficulty or a problem, right? If we didn't have a weakness, how would we know we needed a Savior? Right? Or I'm going to say more than one weakness, but let's just, let's just call it weakness. Storms, problems, trouble, difficulties, pressure exposes our weakness. Just like if you were testing a, a product, you would test it, stress test it to try to make it fail so that you could make it stronger. And storms and troubles test us. They, they bring us to the point of failure. Hello? And failure is not as bad as we think it is. Hello? It points us toward God. It points us toward Jesus. And Jesus came up that day and he said, Guys, come on. Have a little faith. And you remember he spoke to the storm and he calmed it down. And they went on to the other side. If you got Jesus with you in the boat in the middle of your storm, you're going to be okay. The exposing of our weakness, though in our kind of our culture, the, the way that we live, is a bad thing. But in God's economy, it's a good thing. Because you remember the Apostle Paul said, I glory in my weakness. Because in my weakness, his strength is made perfect in me. You know, come on, are you with me? So it doesn't matter, you know, when you're a kid and you get on a sports team, and I don't know if anybody ever had the experience of being the last one picked on, you know, the baseball team or whatever team you guys were, anybody? And uh, they're like, ah, oh, come on. You ever been there? And uh, so God's like, I'll take all those guys, gals. I'll take them all. I'll take you, all you guys. Because it doesn't matter how good your natural abilities are or how big your weakness is. He goes, I can fill it with my strength. And if you're a 2, I'll make you a 10. If you're a 7, I'll make you a 10. It, it really is inconsequential how deep or, let's come on, just say, how weak you are. Come on, we all have strengths. God's given us that, but we all have weaknesses. That's why we need each other, and that's ultimately why we need God. And he speaks to these storms. And so of those fishermen on that boat, probably the strongest, most natural leader of the whole 12 was, somebody help me, Peter. Peter is like the take charge guy. Everybody else is standing around looking at it, whatever, and he's like, Get it. come on guys, let's do it. Right? Right? He was going to cut the Roman soldier in half with the, one of their swords, but he ducked and he just got his ear. He must have been quick. But Peter was strong. He's a strong leader. He was the strongest, most vocal leader of the disciples, the ones of that 12. And then we know what happened to Peter. Jesus said, well, somebody in this group is going to deny me before the sun comes up tomorrow. This is the Last Supper. And Peter's like... Well, it'll never be me, Lord. I would never leave you. 
And then, boom! Three times in one night, Peter got afraid and he denied Jesus. The guy who took the sword and was going to cut the soldier's head in half. Come on. So even sometimes when we're strong, then we can find ourselves land in a place of weakness. Anybody can I get a witness? And it's Father's Day, but this is true for dads. It's true for all of us. Listen, I'm just telling you today, whatever, wherever you have failed or fallen short in your life, today's a new day. In God, in Jesus, it's a new day. I love it. He says, hey, man, t- yesterday's gone. This morning, my mercies are new. It's a new day. Let's go. We got a fresh start. Come on, get up. Let's go. Well, I, I messed up. I blew it. I'm weak. He's like, I already knew that. Come on. He, he knew it before he got us, right? He didn't get you and go, oh, man, I didn't know they were that bad. Oh. He goes, I, I know you. My strength is sufficient. My strength is sufficient. He exposes these weaknesses. That's why we need a Savior. We need, we've all failed. Let's just be honest and get it out here today. We've all failed at times under pressure. Come on. You said something, you did something, you didn't do something. I mean, we've all failed under pressure at times. Let's go. We could identify with Peter, right? We could identify. But Jesus said, I'm going to go. He's our Savior. But he says, I'm going to ask the Father. The Father has a promise, and he has a gift for you, and it's the Holy Spirit who will be with you and in you, and he will give you this power and this strength, and he will lead you and guide you, and he will give you the strength to make up for the weaknesses and the failures in our life. Amen? So when we... When we fail, when we fall short with God, we don't need to go hide. We need to go to the throne. Right? Oh, man, Lord, I, I blew it. I thought I was going to do better. Peter didn't think he was going to deny Jesus three times. I had a plan to do better, but I blew it. I, I need you to help me, Lord. Or, you know, I don't want to do it, but I'll probably do it again. Come on. But, Lord, I want to do better. I want to be more like you. I want more of your strength and more of your power in my life. Right? He sends us the Holy Spirit, which is the great equalizer who comes in and gives us the power to stand up under the pressure, whatever the pressure is. Hebrews 12. 2, 12, 1 and 2 says it like this. Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Come on, here, here it is. Here's Jesus. He's in the garden, sweating great drops of blood, asking God. He's, he's feeling weak. He did not want to go through this crucifixion. Lord, if there's any other way, but nonetheless, Lord, not Father, not Father, it's Father's Day, Father, not my will, but your will. Because if you want me to do this, I know you will give me the strength and the power to do it. There's our model. Verse 2, Hebrews 12, 2 says, Jesus, who for the joy set before him, he saw the joy on the other side of the cross, endured the cross. He scorned the shame. Could I tell you something this morning? Scorned the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Woo! In Jesus... You can scorn the shame of your weakness, of our failure, of our shortcomings. We can scorn the shame of it. Nobody else has to like it, agree with it, whatever. We just know if God like, God likes us, if He's with us, then we're okay. And you have a seat with Him. The Bible says with Jesus, we have a seat with Him in heavenly places. And He scorned the shame, and He sat down at the right hand of the Father for the joy that was before Him. Peter comes to Jesus um, after he blew it. And uh, 
I think we have this verse, Luke 22, 31. Luke 22, 31. And the Lord Jesus said to Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Somebody said, if you, if you, lived, if you lived any life, you've been sifted. If you're going through some trouble, you're being sifted. I don't know, do people still do that with flour? You have the old flour sifter where you turn the thing and the flour falls out the bottom, you know? The old flour sifters, you've been sifted. Or, or back in the day when they took the wheat out of the field and they put it in a threshing press and they crushed it and just the kernels and the shaft blew away, but the kernels came through. It said he's, he's, he's getting the good stuff. God is able to get the good stuff out of you when you go through pressure. Are you with me? Pressure. He said, Satan has desired to sift you. I don't have the next verse, but the next verse says, when you come back, Peter, it's not in there, but he says, and you will come back. When you come back, Peter, strengthen your brothers. When you come back, strengthen your brothers. Did anybody ever watch? This is, I'm going back now. Come on, some of you, some of you are my generation. You remember the, bas- the movie, Hoosiers. Anybody remember that movie? Basketball in Indiana. And there was the littlest, tiniest little guy on the the team. I think they called him Pee Wee. And when he shot free throws, he had to shoot it granny style. Anybody know what that is? You know, the ball between his legs. and, And he got fouled at the end of the game. He had to make two free throws to win the game. And the coach said, I, 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 he said his name, or he, everybody called him Pee-wee, Pee-wee. After Pee-wee makes these two free throws, the whole team, then he looks over there, and you will make these two free throws, Pee-wee. And he did. I know, it's a movie. But God says, Peter, when you've returned, he wasn't returned yet. He was still living in shame. He disappointed himself. He let Jesus down. He let his brothers down. He let himself down. He was so upset with himself, he couldn't face it. He couldn't deal with it. Come on. And Jesus said, when you return, Peter, and you will return, strengthen your brothers. Did you know when you've been through failure, storms, trouble, disappointment, you can come alongside somebody else who's going through it now and say, hey man, God brought me through it. He'll bring you through it. Are you with me? Sifted. Sifted. It happened to Jesus in the wilderness. Luke chapter 4, Jesus Jesus went out into the wilderness and Satan tempted him. And he said, it is written. Could I give you a verse? Write this one down because you might not believe it's in the Bible. Hebrews 5, 8. I've talked to people and they said, that's not in the Bible. Yeah, it is. Hebrews 5, 8. See this one? Though he was a son, speaking of Jesus, yet he learned obedience by the things he suffered. Are you with me? There's, There's suffering and pressure. Come on. There's suffering and difficulty, trials. There's suffering when you fail. There's suffering and weakness. Come on, let's, let's be real about it. There's, there's pain associated with that, right? But the Bible says that though Jesus was the Son of God, He learned obedience through the things that He suffered. He suffered through the Garden of Gethsemane where He prayed and He sweat great drops of blood. That's suffering. Are you with me? Disappointment, heartache, pressure, trouble, setbacks, failure, suffering. But it said he learned to just keep listening to the voice of the Father and obey the Father. Keep following the voice. Keep following the Word. Keep following the truth. And Jesus said, I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. The same Spirit, the Bible says, who raised Christ from the dead on the third day shall dwell in you and shall quicken your mortal body. Woo! I 
I don't have it up here, but I, I love 1 John 1, 9. When we sin, when we fail, when, whether it's a weakness or a sin, it says, be through Jesus, we have an advocate with the Father who is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin when we repent and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Hello? You guys tracking with me okay? So when you return, Peter, when you return, Jesus knew what he was talking about. He learned obedience through the things he suffered. Peter's in the midst of suffering because of his disappointment and his, his failure and his disappointment in himself. You ever been there? He says, when you return, you will be transformed. Ah, the power. How does this all work? The power of the Holy Spirit. We just read in Acts 1, 4 through 8. Jesus said, he appeared to 500 people, the Bible says, after his resurrection. And he told them, wait in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father. That's the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. Come on. He said, in, in verse 4, he said, the promise of my Father in verse 8, he says, the gift of the Father. We can't earn it. You can't be good enough for it. It's a promise and it's a gift. I don't know about, I don't know about your dad and all us earthly dads. Sometimes we say things and then we want to do it, but then we can't do it. And then we drop the ball. Anybody, come on, can I get a witness? And, uh, but, but the good, good Father, he keeps his word. He promised, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit, the same one that raised Jesus from the dead, to dwell in you and quicken your mortal body. It's a promise and it's a gift. Acts 1, verse 4 and verse 8. Come on. I, I like to get gifts like that, don't you? It's a promise and it's a gift. He says... Um, Trade your weakness to be a witness. Trade your weakness to be a witness. So, here's Peter. When you return, Peter, strengthen your brothers. Now, Peter and all of you, so he obviously got back to him. They were out fishing. Go to Jerusalem. Wait for the promise of the Father. Don't do anything until you get this. Can I just, and I, I'm going to just throw this in here because uh, Judas failed too. Judas denied Jesus. Judas sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. But I'm, we're going to get to this, I'll get to this here in a few minutes before we close, but I want to say I believe, and if you disagree with me, that's okay. I believe Judas could have taken the same path as Jesus. I mean, excuse me, as Peter. Peter. Peter tells us later, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may lift you up in due season. Come on. We're not to punish ourselves for our failures. We're to come to the Father and ask His forgiveness. The prodigal son came to the Father after he really messed up everything, and the Father ran out, the, uh, representing our Father, and met Him and welcomed Him and kissed Him and brought Him home. Come on. That's the goal. I personally believe Judas could have taken the same path as Peter. Humble yourself. It's, hmm, I'm going to say it. I, I, I hear 
that it's Pride Month. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that pride comes before a fall. But the Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. All of us. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that He could lift you up in due season. Don't take it in your own hands to take your own life like Judas did. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And He will raise you up. Receive the promise of the Father. Receive the gift of the Father. Right? God honors humility. It says there in uh, 1 Peter verse 5, we're going to get there in a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself, but it says there, God resists the proud. I'm talking about all of us across the board. God resists our pride, but he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Lord, i got to have your help. I need your help. If I don't get your help, I'm going to do this again. I need your help. Because help is on the way. Just wait and receive the promise of the Father. And it's a free gift. Come on. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to be good enough. You just have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. It's, it's a free gift to all those who receive Jesus Christ. Somebody said amen. The Holy Spirit. I took a note here. I've got to just share this with you. He is called in. The Holy Spirit is called in to help in a situation which a person by themselves cannot cope. Can I get a witness? The Holy Spirit comes in to help us when we get into a situation the pressure's too great. We cannot cope. Happens to everybody in this world. Are you with me? He will keep a person on his feet when left to himself, who left to himself would collapse. Right? Under the pressure left to ourselves, we would collapse, but the Holy Spirit in us will keep us up on our feet. The Holy Spirit enables us to pass the breaking point, but not break. Come on. It's a free gift for all those who have received salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a free gift. Peter, come on. His first book would have been called The Epic Failure. His second book would have been How to Win 3,000 People to Christ in One Day. Acts chapter 2. Come on. From epic failure, that's the story of our life, right? We have all failed, some of us more epically than others. We've all failed, we've all sinned, we've all fallen short, the Bible says, but there's, there's Peter. And we can all follow the same path that Peter did. Somebody help me out, I've got to find 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5. Okay, got it there? Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Hey, wait, wait, this is the guy, hang on, this is the guy that denied Jesus three times when he said he never would. And he quit the ministry, he quit the team, he quit the Jesus team, he went back to fishing, he's like, forget about this. Now, later in his life, he's writing from his experience, and he's, this is later toward the end of his life when he's writing these words. That we are to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. He may exalt you in due time. Cast all your care on Him, for He cares for you. Do you think He knew? He goes, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He goes, resist Him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to His eternal glory, by Jesus Christ. Let, underline this part right here. After you have suffered a while, He will raise you up, perfect, established, strengthen, and settle you. Come on. After you suffered a little while, 
And if it weren't for the Holy Spirit in you through Jesus, you would not be able to stand. But He will raise us up. I like the translation that says, He will raise us up strong, firm, and steadfast. Come on. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Peter, Peter the epic failure, Peter the denier, come on. He stood up, and the Holy Spirit inside him, he stood up. He did what Jesus said. He did what he's telling us. He humbled himself under the mighty hand of God. He scorned the shame of his failure. He sat down with Jesus in the upper room for 10 days and waited for the promise of the Father. And on the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out, he preached the first sermon in the church almost 2,000 years ago. Come on. He preached the very first sermon in the new, in Jesus' church, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. The first sermon. The denier. He denied Jesus to a little, probably a teenage girl. He was afraid, a scared. He was a scared. Come on. He was a scared. He stood up in front of the mob and preached. He didn't even have a sound system. I don't know how he'd do this because there were thousands and thousands of people there. But he stood up and preached. Here he is, the Holy Spirit standing up on the inside of him. And he goes down in Acts, Acts 2.38. We have this in here somewhere. Acts 2.38. Somebody help me. Acts 2.38. So he preached this whole sermon. If you got time, take time this afternoon to read, the, read, read Peter's sermon, the first sermon. He is, can I say he's laying him low. He says, you guys crucified Jesus and he's the Messiah. And he preached this sermon and people were saying, what can we do? In Acts 2.38, I love what he says. It's a simple formula. He says, repent and be baptized. Have you ever heard this, I'm going to say, theology that all you got to do is believe in Jesus? Are you with me? The, the Bible says that even the demons believe in Jesus. Right? Come on. Even the demons believe in Jesus. Yeah, you got to believe in Jesus, but Peter preached and said, repent. And it's implied that you believe in Jesus if you're going to repent. But just some weird, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. There's a repentance repentance which is a humbling of myself under the mighty hand of God which says I'm going to humble myself I'm going to repent the mere fact that I'm repenting says I believe that Jesus loves me and he's going to forgive me but I must repent I need to repent I need to humble myself come on you guys help me out somebody I don't need to be prideful and just say, oh, yeah, I'm fine. I believe in Jesus. Hello? I mean, the Bible says work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I'm not saying you got to go around being afraid you're going to hell all the time, but just make sure that you're humbling yourself and that he's in you and you're following him. Come on. The fact that I believe in him, the fact that I repent of going my own way implies that now I'm following after you, Jesus. Come on, are you with me? 
And Judas went his own way. He went the prideful way. He was ashamed. We've all done things that bring shame on ourselves. Come on. So he just took care of himself. He just went out and hung himself. But Peter went God's way. He humbled himself. He did what Jesus said. Are you guys? Come on. He did what Jesus said. He did what Jesus said. He humbled himself. And then Holy Spirit helped Peter's weakness. In fact, it's not in the Bible, but historians tell us that Peter, when he, when he was martyred for his faith in Christ, he was killed for his faith in Jesus, that he was going to be crucified, and he refused to be crucified right side up. He said, crucify him upside down. Come on. He said, I'm not worthy to be crucified in the same manner as Jesus. Woo. Now that is the power of God. Come on, we don't want to minimize the power of God with our pride of just our religious works. Are you with me? It is humbling myself under the mighty hand of God that His Spirit can help me stand up when the pressure should knock me down, okay? And you know what? Hey, if you get knocked down, that's okay. It doesn't mean the Holy Spirit's not in you. He gives us one another, and one of us will come along and help you back up. I've had people come along and help me up. I've had people come along and help me up and help me walk a while when I couldn't walk by myself. Come on. That's why we have each other. We've got to have the power, dads, fathers, mothers, all of us, young people, old people, everybody. We need the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. That's repentance, humbling myself under the mighty hand of God, thinking that I can do it on my own thinking that I can make it happen. Right? Repent and be baptized implies that we're believing and we're humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Because, you know, uh, and I, I'm going to close on this, but a repentant, a repentant heart, a repentant heart, the next thing we say is, he cleansed our sin. He cleanses us from unrighteousness. He puts his cloak on us. He puts his name on us. He writes us into the will and the family. Puts us in the inheritance. A humbling, humbling myself. Repentance. My next question is, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? How are we going to do this? How are we going to get through this? And sometimes he doesn't even tell you how. He says, my peace is better than understanding. Just stick with me and I'll get you through this. Come on. Come on. Last week we read the scripture in Philippians 4, 7, which says his peace is superior to knowing what you're going to do. Hello? Stick with me, he says. I'll get you through this. Just keep asking and receiving the promise of the Father, the good, good Father, His promise and His gift of the Holy Spirit through this blood covenant that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You. Thank You for Jesus. Jesus, thank you for your life, your death on the cross, your burial, your resurrection. Thank you that you asked the Father, your word says, and you sent, he sent your Holy Spirit to dwell in us. Lord, we're asking you today for more, more, more of your Holy Spirit. We need the fullness of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we repent for going our own way. We repent for trying to punish ourselves. 
We repent for trying to carry our shame or our guilt. Whew. Freely we receive your salvation. And if you need to make that decision or that choice today, that's between you and the Lord, but all you have to do is say, Lord, I repent of going my own way. I repent of just trying to be good enough without you. I repent. I need your forgiveness, Jesus. I can't earn it, I know. But I ask for your forgiveness today as a free gift. Cleanse me. Forgive my sin. Cleanse me of my unrighteousness. Make me new. I open the door of my heart and my life and invite you to come in, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And we ask you, Jesus, Heavenly Father, we ask you, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Your word says, be being baptized, be being filled with your Holy Spirit. Fill us afresh and anew. Every father that's here, every man, every woman, every child, fill us, fill us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Cleanse our, our shame and our guilty conscience and our sin. We think of that that's cleansed today by the blood of Jesus. And Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit just like you did Peter. Our weakness is the perfect receptacle for your Holy Spirit, for your strength, for your power. Thank you. Thank you, Abba Father. If you just want to make a simple act of faith today and say, I need, to, I need, a, I need a fresh filling, I need a fresh start, just a simple act of faith. The Bible says in James, a faith without works is dead, so... Just lift, lift your hand up to him. Just lift your hand up or lift both hands up and say, Lord, I just receive it from you freely today. Freely today. I just receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive your promise. I receive your promise, Father. I receive your free gift through this blood covenant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I receive it today. In Jesus, Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand, please? Woo, God is good. God is good. Come on up here, Gabe. All right, good message. Uh, before we leave, I just wanted to pray for Alexandria. I'm doing an audible here. I just found out she's leaving for the Philippines on the 22nd. So, Alexandria, see you around. Okay, if uh, we just call, turn and just kind of lay our hands on Alexandra, let's just pray with her really quick. Father God, just thank you and praise you for your daughter in Christ, Lord, and I just ask you just to go with her and safe, let her be safe on the flight, Lord, the whole way there as she reestablishes in the Philippines, Lord. We just pray blessings and peace and just uh, encouragement over her, Lord, in your name. Amen. All right, um, closing up in the back. We have Dad's Root Beers, uh, Root Beer Floats. So um, as you leave, there's going to be Root Beer Floats in the back. And yeah, help yourself. I'm just going to do a quick prayer of uh, safe travels for you guys. Father God, just thank you and praise you for everyone coming here, Lord, and I ask you just all have a good day and safe travels home in your name. Amen.